some of the planets in this solar system show rings. The first observation of rings was made by Galileo. Galileo at the beginning thought that there was more than one planet moving together. Uh, so the drawings show three features and then a sort of ring. It was very hard for uh, Galileo with his telescope to see carefully what was uh, Saturn-like. Now we know that all the gases planets have rings. Here we can see a comparison between them, the four gases planets. This is a picture of the nice Jupiter's rings in the infrared uh, band. We can see clearly that Jupiter has a very hot zone at the poles and a dim ring around. These are six pictures equal to each other. What could be the source of these rings? Most probably there are uh, former moons that disappeared for some reason, maybe for the tidal force of Jupiter. So the debris now form the ring of Jupiter. They were very difficult to see because they are made of dust and another probable source, plausible at least, could be the uh, Io moon which is rotating around and has a strong volcanic activity and maybe the source of this uh, matter for the Jupiter's rings. In this picture we can see a model for the Jupiter's rings and a picture taken by the Voyager spacecraft from behind. So we have Jupiter in front of the Sun and we can see the dim uh, rings around it. What partially explains the strange drawings by Galileo is the changing aspect of Saturn's rings. This depends mainly on the rotation of Saturn around the Sun and the fact that uh, Saturn's rings are tilted with respect to the orbit around the Sun. What is impressive about Saturn's rings is that they are very large in extension at least 100,000 kilometers, but they are very thin, like 100 meters, so they, in, in comparison, they are thinner than a normal piece of paper. The first evidence that they were not solid was obtained by James Clerk Maxwell, who understood that they was rotating too fast, and in case they were solid, they would have been torn apart. By this strong rotation. Saturn rings follow exactly the Kepler's law, so inner rings rotate faster than outer rings, and there are small gaps in between the rings. The composition of Saturn's rings is mostly ice, and the part of ice can be as big as a house or as small as a, a football. Saturn's rings show several gaps. Those gaps are mostly related to the moons wiping that region. Other moons act together in order to uh, narrow uh, a single ring. This kind of moon are called Shepherd moons, they're able to narrow the ring, and as we can see, they also produce a kind of wave on the rings. And the moonlets responsible for the gaps look like flying saucers in this picture. And for sure, the eyes for the E ring is provided by Enceladus, like you see in this picture. Then there is Uranus. This is a nice picture taken by the Hubble Space Telescope, proving that there are dark uh, rings even in Uranus. They are as dark as charcoal. 
Even Neptune shows rings, very thin. What is interesting is that these rings cannot last longer than one million years. What would be a possible explanation? If a moon approaches too much a planet, then the tidal forces are so strong that they may tear apart the planet and possibly form rings. Then this line that we see here is called the Roche limit and if you are closer than this line the moon is disrupted. But the main problem is that the rings should be transient, they could not last forever. So they have continuously to be supplied by matter. And one possible origin could be a continuous asteroidal impact because a moon break, as the one we have seen before, is very rare. What emerges clearly by putting all the rings to scale is that almost all of the rings are closer than the Roche limit, which is 2.4 uh, radii of the planet. Except for some ring, for example, the E ring of Saturn is beyond this Roche limit. Well, then we have some explanation for the ring's formation. But not everything is completely explained as usual in science.